I've been wanting to build the ultimate small gig rig for quite some time. Hopefully we're all gonna start to see local shows again this year. I think that would be amazing. In the meantime, I reached out to some of the best guitar gear manufacturers on earth, and this is what I came up with. So I thought I'd start this build with a brand new vertical two by 12 from Zilla Cabs from England. It's all kinds of awesome. It's even got the white Tolex with the black go faster racing stripes. Not gonna make your load in or load out any faster, but it is going to look very cool. Next up, in order to break up the monotony of the typical 5150 into a vintage 30 sound, which sounds great, but it's a little bit overdone, I contacted my friends over at WGS Speakers and we're gonna load this up with a Green Beret and a Reaper. Now to power this little beast, we've got the Seymour Duncan Power Stage 700. And the brains of the operation will be the Neural DSP Quad Cortex. Let's see what all this compacts down to. Now, normally the Zilla cabs come preloaded with a pair of speakers, but I specifically asked to get an empty cab so I could mount a pair myself. All right, let's get those speakers in, see what happens. I've got the speakers mounted. I'm about ready to button the cabinet up, put the back panel on and wire it up completely. Right now I've got two 8 ohm speakers and they're going to be wired in series to create a 16 ohm cab. On second thought, I did a little bit of research and the general opinion on the forums for whatever that's worth seems to be that the bottom end is better with a four ohm cabinet. So I am gonna wire the speakers up in parallel. Uh, doesn't hurt to do a little bit of research to maybe help you out with what you're going for. Hopefully the forums are right. I mean, usually they are, but hey, um, it can be anybody's guess considering everybody had an opinion and nobody had any evidence to prove otherwise. Maybe that's a video I need to do at some point. Should I wire my cabinet to four ohms or 16 ohms? In this case, two eight ohm speakers, you can go either way, series or parallel. So I am gonna go parallel. Hopefully we're gonna get some good results. Now, word of caution, if you're going with a four ohm cabinet, just make sure that your amp can handle it. Now, here's the great thing. If your amp can only say handle eight ohms, you can wire your cabinet to 16 ohms, you'll be perfectly fine. But if you were to wire that cab to four ohms, you could run into problems, including blowing your power section. And I'm sure that's a repair that none of us ever want to deal with. Just a good general rule of thumb you can take your amps output and go into a higher impedance cabinet, but not the other way around. Please keep that in mind when you're doing your speaker assembly. And don't forget to check some wiring charts online to make sure you're hooking your speakers up correctly. There's all kinds of great resources out there. Doesn't take too long to do a Google image search to see how you should be wiring your speakers up. Really simple stuff. Now, of course, the biggest concern with this entire setup is weight. So I pulled out uh, what I've been doing my keto with, which is my bathroom scale, and I'm gonna just weigh the components here. We'll figure out what the entire setup is going to slow you down by. So Quad Cortex comes in at 4.4 pounds. And the Power Stage 700 comes in at 6.6 .6 pounds. So we're looking at a combined weight of 11 pounds. These can easily fit into a backpack with like no issues whatsoever. Now the cabinet itself weighs in at 59 pounds. Now, as far as cabinets go, 59 pounds isn't completely terrible. I mean, like it does have a bit of heft, that's for sure, but it's not gonna break your back either. And the great thing about the two x 12 is, you know, you don't have to have a giant trunk in the back of your car to get it to the gig. This will just slide right into your back seat, even if you don't have a four door car. That's That was always a trick, is getting the great big four by 12s into the back seat on a two door. Kind of an art unto itself. This, th this is small enough, you can actually do that and you can avoid any issues. So that's a serious win for Zilla right there. Now, word of the wise, even though this cabinet is only 59 pounds, please proceed with caution and don't drop it on your foot like I just did. 
Um, yeah, it's only 59 pounds, but man, this really smarts and I'm hoping I didn't break anything. So yes, be careful when you're moving your gear. That goes without saying, uh, cause this hurts like a bitch. <laughs> All right, so we got the rig in place and the footprint is so small, I've actually brought it here into the control room, something I've never done. Usually I've got my cabs out, mic'd up in the other room. It's kind of fun to actually sit here and just play this rig in the room and hear what's actually going on and you know, feel the guitar vibrating from the sound of the speakers. That's something I don't normally get. So we got the Seymour Duncan power stage sitting here. It's operating very cool actually and i've just got the quad cortex on top for easy access but the great thing is i can set that up as a foot switch on a stage rig which is no problem now the reason i don't have it down on the floor is because i'm using the air step as a foot switch to control my cameras and i don't want my feet getting confused this thing actually works really great so let's give this a shot uh, for the first patch here we've got a soldano and a 5150 pair going out just to the speaker and the real strength of this of this rig is i can split the outputs we can go, we can go out one, out three, four, out whatever. And this is the cool thing. If I want to use speaker cabinet simulations out to the PA, I can do that. I can have a dry feed with no IR going right to the cabinet here. And then I can take another output out of the back of the quad cortex, feed it to a PA and send it whatever speaker emulation I want. Now the rig is mic'd with a 5150 and a Roswell Mini K47. I really like that pair. It works really great. I thought about going with a flat frequency response speaker and just using the cabinet emulations. But you know, then again, I really like the sound of this cab with these WGS speakers. I think it adds an interesting character. Now I'm not gonna rule out the idea of doing flat frequency response speakers in the future. If you guys have some suggestions as to who makes them and what model I should be looking at, please leave a comment below because I love hearing from you guys. Anyway, let's check out what this thing sounds like. <laughs> Now I've got this amp dialed in right now to be comfortable in the room without damaging my hearing. I don't have any earplugs in and I would never ever go on stage without hearing protection. But this thing is so freaking loud, your drummer will be begging you to turn it down. Let's see just how loud it really is. Okay, so I pulled out my ancient Radio Shack SPL meter. I've got it about two feet in front of the cabinet. We're gonna crank this up and show just how much power we've got. Uh, the volume knob is at about the 11 o'clock position, so we're not even halfway up. And uh, this is how much output this thing has. <laughs> What? Oh, anyway, yeah, my ears are just starting to feel that a little bit. I'm not even in front of, of the cab. I'm just kind of off to the side here. So the, the whole wash is being pushed that way. Let's put it this way. From what I can see here is about 116, 117 dBs. Uh, that is some serious movement of air. I feel bad for whoever this gets pointed at. In other words, I don't think you're gonna have problems hearing yourself live on stage with this rig, that's for sure. Now to show off just how versatile this rig is, I got out my Fender American Ultra Strat. Oh, I love this guitar. And I thought we'd go, you know, retro mode here. Let's go to into plexi mode with this. Let's just see what kind of an old school type of uh, hard rock, early metal sound we can get, shall we? <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, you know what? I think that does the old fried plexi sound pretty well, to be honest with you. Uh, definitely a very different kind of vibe than the 5150 and Ormsby combination, but really cool as well. I would definitely take this rig up on stage and know it could probably cover all the bases I would need anyway. Then again, I've got pretty simple tastes. Give me a 5150 or something along those lines or a Soldano or pay hey, you name or a Rev and um, I'm a happy guy. I don't have to do 50 million patch changes a show just to satisfy my own ego. Give me one good sound and I'm happy with it. The fact I've got two here is great. But then again, that's just me. Your mileage may vary. You want might want even more versatility. Now, I've been pondering the idea of making an impulse of this cabinet to give to you, the viewer, for just being fucking awesome. So I'm going to put it to you. If you'd like to get your hands on an impulse of this, I need a couple days to do this. I need to make the impulse and get the whole thing set up so you guys can download it and send you a link and all that good stuff. So if you guys could do me a favor and give the video a like and let me know in the comments if you would like an impulse of this amazing Zilla cap, I would really appreciate that. And please, of course, subscribe so you get notified when that impulse is available. That's my gift to you for just being awesome and watching the show. Anyway, if you guys have suggestions for your own portable gig rig, I want to hear from you. If you've got something you want to go out on stage with, you think it's pretty awesome, let us know your ideal rig in the comments below. Okay, before I go, I just want to give a great big shout out to all the brands that made this video possible. It's Zilla Cabs, Seymour Duncan. I can't believe they jammed 700 watts into this thing. This is freaking cool. Neural DSP. And last but not least, Warehouse Guitar Speakers. Uh, they've been absolutely great. And I love the fact WGS definitely has their own thing going on in terms of sound. And they're made in the USA as well and are definitely priced to compete with other offerings from other major brands. Definitely worth taking a look at. Anyway, thanks for watching and keep your eyes peeled for the upcoming video where you guys get an impulse of this.